Hey guys, it's DC here and today I'm going to tell you how you can start your career in cybersecurity. So this is one of the probably most asked topics that I ever get asked and it's how do I get started, what should I start studying and just like a general overview of how to begin your career in cybersecurity as a broad industry. There's a few different things here that I need to mention, which is that cybersecurity is sort of like a trade. So when you go into a trade, you either do plumbing or electrician or carpentry, and it's very much the same in cybersecurity. There's bug bounties, different types of pen testing, there's defensive security, infrastructure security. There's, there's so many different types of security under cybersecurity or infosec that you have to sort of pick and choose fairly early on. However, what you can do is study a broad group of certificates and maybe even a degree where you can then choose later on what you want to get into after you've understood each of those different uh, aspects more thoroughly. So if you're in that position, this video is for you. So let's begin at the very beginning. You've just finished high school, for example, or you've just come out of another industry and you want to get started in cybersecurity. My number one advice is to start a degree. Now, you don't have to choose a cybersecurity specific degree, although that would look better to a recruiter who probably doesn't understand the difference between the degrees and what courses are in them anyway. So for people who are doing a computer science degree, that's perfectly fine. You can start with your computer science degree and then move upwards from there to something else or major in cybersecurity. Alternatively, you can do a cybersecurity degree specializing in cybersecurity practices, which as I said before, is gonna look better to the recruiters anyway. Now, once you've finished this degree and it's gonna take a few years, I would then recommend getting a CCNA. And the reason I always mention a CCNA in these videos is because recruiters actually understand what that is. And there are so many jobs for network engineers out there over cybersecurity engineers that you'll definitely land a job straight out of uni once you've finished that degree and the certificate. Now, once you've landed yourself a job and the first place to start looking for jobs is managed service providers or MSPs and other help desk jobs. And I know nobody wants to go into help desk because it doesn't pay that much, but you're going to learn so much firsthand and from other team members that it's, it's actually quite worthwhile doing. It also looks great on your resume further down the line where you've got experience as a help desk officer across a whole different range of technologies. Now, if that's not for you and you don't wanna do help desk or work at a service provider, that's fine, you're just going to have to skill up a little bit more than the other people who are going straight into a job and moving their way up that way. My recommendations on certifications here are to get a CEH, which recruiters don't really care about, but it's worth knowing anyway to have that information. And then moving on to something like either an OSCP if you wanna get into pen testing. And like I said before, you have to sort of decide early on what you wanna do. The other alternative is to do a Security Plus by CompTIA, which is definitely going to bolster you into a position of defensive security. The Security Plus teaches you a pretty large range of different technologies within cybersecurity, and it's definitely worth getting into. So just to recap, do a degree, get a CCNA, and then either get a CEH or Certified Ethical Hacker, or go down the more defensive route and get a Security Plus by CompTIA. Now you're sort of at a, a tier of roads here. There's the pen testing route, and then there's the defensive security route. And this is where things sort of branch out into multiple different versions of cybersecurity or aspects and talents. If you then want to go into the defensive route, which is honestly where most of the jobs are, you would then want to look at some infrastructure specific certifications. So what I mean by that is like a checkpoint certification or a Palo Alto certification, or maybe even a security CCNA to sort of go down the Cisco route of security technology. Now, once, once you're at this point, you definitely have some job experience. You definitely have enough certifications to move upwards. And this is like your, the entry level to mid-level 
uh, area of cybersecurity or IT in general that's going to then bolster your career from there. So that's where you start and that's the base that you really need to stand out from the rest. Now I know a lot of you are going to say it's not that easy to get a job and you're right, it's not that easy. And I know a lot of people say that there's a huge gap in the industry, but it's not quite true, especially with the early stage or entry level positions. Because there are so many different people currently studying to be a cybersecurity professional, those entry level positions are flooded. Now the positions you would be applying for are things like SOC Analyst Level 1, or a Cybersecurity Engineer Level 1, or at an MSP you would just be a Security Engineer. Your best chances are honestly with a service provider because they change through their staff pretty quickly because the job does burn people out and once they've got one or two years experience, they move on anyway. So yeah, an MSP is definitely your most likely place to get a job. And that's common around the world, not just Australia or the US. There are also quite a lot of opportunities within government for defensive positions and they're usually looking for staff and they do recruiting rounds of between 20 and a couple of hundred employees. They're obviously going to pick the people with more experience and certifications to fill their requirements but you still have a pretty good chance if you have a degree and a security plus and maybe a CEH and um, you understand some programming languages which you would have learnt in university anyway. But yeah, that's basically how you get started and where to start looking for jobs. Um, as far as money is concerned, the MSPs are definitely going to pay you more than the governments in most cases, but that's not saying that a government job isn't great. They're nice and stable, nine to five, you don't do too much work after hours, and the work-life balance is honestly a little bit better than a service provider where you're likely to be working from sometimes seven to seven. And I know when I was working in an MSP, I sometimes started at six and I didn't finish until 11 p.m. at night. So it's not uncommon to work long hours to get a project done, but it's just the nature of the beast. You do get paid overtime sometimes. In my case, I didn't get paid any overtime. I ended up just getting a thing called time in lieu which is usually a way that employees cheat their employees from time and they promise them that they'll get a holiday at the end when they never actually do. But saying that, I'm not the only person who went through that. Everyone in that MSP was working long hours and doing time in lieu and um, being promised long hours and it's pretty common across lots of different service providers. So don't be shocked if they ask you to do some pretty hectic hours. Anyway, I hope this video sort of helps to explain to you guys how you should get started and what certifications most of the employees are looking for. I'm doing an interview with a cybersecurity recruiter pretty soon who's going to explain in more depth exactly what certifications these employers are looking for and what sort of experience and money value is on each of the different jobs that are at an entry and mid level. I'm not going to bother asking him about anything uh, sort of at the top level because you've got to work pretty hard to get there anyway and by that time you might decide it's time for a career change or AI might take over. So yeah, thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Comment below if you have any questions and I'll try to get them on the next video. And of course, subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys, catch you later.